Ahoy! Captain Benzie here, coming at you with a video analysing the May balance update for Command & Conquer Rivals. The patch notes have just landed, um, I've been given a copy of them, so I've gone through and given my thoughts on all these. As usual, no flashy animations or anything specific to look at, so just put the kettle on, grab a biscuit, sit down and listen to my thoughts. As usual, of course, come and join us on the Gaming Galleon Discord. Details are on screen now. And let me know in the comments below what you think of these balance changes. I love having that conversation with you guys. I love hearing how you're getting on, how you're finding things. So yeah, come join us. Otherwise, it's a bit of a long one, so I am gonna jump straight in and give my thoughts on this balance change now. So first things first, there have been some significant changes to the map pools. Tiberium League always gets a reshuffle, um, but looking at this list here, there's some interesting bits to add to that. One, I am sad to see that Broken Mesa has finally dropped out of Tiberium League. It's been there for about three, four seasons now, so I understand that it's time for it to move on. But swapping that for two fuses? Two fuses is one of the most hated Masters maps. Um, right up there with Canal Row. So yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be fun fighting on that up in Tiberium League. So we'll see. Masters League and Bronze League have also had quite a few of their maps uh, swapped around. Notably, two fuses in Canal Row and now down in Bronze League and uh, Masters League has been changed to accommodate. This is ultimately because a lot of people get stuck in Masters for a long time. It's, it's a long slog. If you're going from Tiberium at the reset back down to Diamond or whatever it is, and then climbing up, Masters is the slowest point for you because you don't get those win streak bonuses anymore. So I understand that yes, changing the maps around just freshens up that climb a little bit and I'm all for it. It keeps the theme going with those two swaps there. Um, yeah, I look forward to actually getting to fight on those as I come up. Uh, there have been some other map changes for peaks and valleys and three lanes, apparently to reduce choke points. I don't actually have graphics on that yet, so I don't know the exact changes and I can't comment on them, but we'll see. Finally, a bug fix. Adjusted the white screen before and after battle to a darker colour. Good, it was getting some complaints, but eh, there we go. Right, and into the balance update. Straight off the GDI Disruptor, as it no longer hits the base twice. Previously, if it was stood next to a base, its beam would do damage to everything in it, hitting the base twice. Um, to compensate for that, the damage against structures has increased from 250 to 400. That is a slight nerf to its damage, technically, because it was doing 500 before. 250 to the first tile, 250 to the second. However, that 400, I think that's actually a considerable buff to anyone who wants to go disrupt a base melting. Why? Because before you needed to be next to the base. You needed to be on the hex next to the base to get the full 500. Now from two hexes away, you are doing 400 damage, which means it is much harder to block. You don't have to travel as far. You don't have to worry about there being something in the way to block, it, uh, block you from getting there. That to me is a big buff. I'm also confused as to why the damage against the vehicles has been increased. When I don't think disruptors are supposed to kill vehicles and quite frankly, vehicles should kill disruptors. But again, it's minor, so we'll see. Mammoth tanks have got a significant speed increase. It's not you know, huge in itself, but it is significant. It's notable and the damage has been increased. Um, last patch didn't even point out that the Mammoth has ammo now. Rather than it just doing a one, two shot sort of thing, it now actually has two shots that reload. So if it only fires one, it's still got a shot in the chamber while it reloads, which was a nice little change that wasn't mentioned. The speed increase, um, it does mean that when you eventually get a Mammoth out, it can possibly actually do something before the game ends now. So I'm all for that. The damage increase, I'm assuming that's just shaving off some rough edges. The MG squad, damage increased from 28 to 26. It's a nice little buff. Is it gonna put MG squads back on the map? Well, we'll see. With the slingshot out, MG squads and slingshot could be a very oppressive combination, especially if some, uh, MG squads um, are doing a decent amount of vehicle damage. I don't think that is gonna be enough, but it does mean they melt infantry that little bit faster. The MLRS gets a buff with its reload speed going from 6.5 down to six. That's just basically making the MLRS a little bit better since the Jackson buff changed. It means an MLRS under Jackson is going to be pretty much the same as it was previously before the MLRS got its first nerfs and before Jackson got its nerf. Um, what it does, however, mean is that without Jackson, the MLRS is that little bit better. So all for that. The Orca Bomber with the release of the Slingshot, it's got some health back, but its cost has increased, which quite frankly, I think is the correct way to do things. You may have noticed if you listen to me uh, do these patch notes frequently, I have a big pet 
hatred for GDI always seeming to get the better end of the stick. So when you look at something like the Wolverines and the Widowmakers and they do the exact same thing and they do it just as well as each other, but Widowmakers get nerf after nerf after nerf and suddenly cost 90 Tiberium to a Wolverine's 80, it's like, well, great, GDI gets the same thing but cheaper. And it's kind of been the same with the Orca Bomber compared to the Inferno. The Inferno's had a few nerfs, it's gone up to 110 cost, and ultimately the Orca Bomber has been better than it. The Orca Bomber does a lot more sustained damage. The only advantage to the Inferno over the Orca Bomber is that uh, fire, and that fire, those fire hexes got nerfed last patch too. So it's good to see that the Orca Bomber has gone up to 110. Um, I think the health is probably justified on that. That said, I, I don't think it needed to go back to where it was. I feel the health for an Orca Bomber has been in a good place. The cost, I think, would have been enough on its own, just increasing the cost, because I, I promise you, I know a lot of people have jumped into the comment section on my Slingshot Intel report and told me that I'm wrong, that the unit's gonna be garbage. Funny how, literally, the day after Slingshots have been sh uh, showing up in Reddit as absolutely slaughtering aircraft that are five levels higher than the Slingshot. I, I cannot overstate it, guys. The Slingshot on the Borka combo is filth. Strong arm. Strong Arms turret has had its health reduced just as uh, uh, a change to how it worked due to Kane. Ultimately, I think Strong Arm's kind of veering off at the moment. She's been in a good place for a long time. I don't think she's ever really been overpowered per se, like for a long time, at least since she got uh, dropped from 45 seconds. Um, I don't think, I don't personally feel that Strong Arm needed a major change, but hey, I, that's not a huge one. Quite frankly, it means that Flame Squads and Shockwaves, yeah, if you pull a turret up next to them, they can turn around and just melt the turret, which is, it's fine. They're structures, that's supposed to happen. On to Nod, artillery changes, which makes me happy. Um, attack per second has increased to 3.2 from 4.25, meaning it fires more frequently, and the projectile speed, oh, oh, oh yes, up to 80 from 50. That's huge. The amount of times, like say, a pit bull is driving past a, an artillery, the artillery fires the shot and misses the pit bull completely because it's on a different tile. That just means it's actually gonna hit things now, which is great. I am all for artillery changes. Artillery and Widowmaker deck, here we go. Avatar, low health in combination with low speed was hurting the Avatar's viability too much. Well, no, no, no really? Like, who saw that one coming? Um, yeah, if you jump back to my previous video, literally what I said, this is too far. The Avatar is getting nerfed <laughs> into dust. And it did. It's, it's almost useless now. But Midnight Nation, if you're watching this right now, I, I can hear you screaming with joy. It, it, it's a beautiful sound. Chemical Warriors damage to against vehicles increased to 15 from 7. That's actually been live for quite a while now. It's just finally in patch notes. So no changes if you've been using Chemical Warriors, but that if you've noticed that Chemical Warriors feel a bit different, that's why. Flame Tank buffs, woohoo! <laughs> we were expecting Flame Tanks to get a buff when they finally took them away from the low leagues because, uh, again, I don't want to go too much into a rant on this one. Flame Tanks were one of those things that were, they were, they were situational in mid to high league play. In the very low leagues, they were oppressive. Because if you don't know how to counter a flame tank, which actually is pretty simple, you just shove a tank in its face and micro the tank in its path. Um, if you don't know how to counter a flame tank, yeah, it can be terrifying having one of these things come to your base and melt it very, very quickly, especially since the disruptor, which does the same thing, it's further up. Considering we've had disruptor buffs, it's nice to see that the flame tank is getting a bit of a buff as well, but let's have a look at what it actually is. Damage against infantry has increased by 80. Damage against vehicles is up. So no base melting, no speed increase, and no damage. But, uh, no speed increase and no health increase. Basically, the flame tank is now slightly better at the super situational thing that it used to do. Okay. Is that going to make flame tanks playable for me? No. No, it's not. No, it's not. The thing about flame tanks and disruptors and ultimately the sandstorm, um, I don't agree with the Kodiak doing it because quite frankly, the Kodiak was too difficult to stop. And you know, Chemical Warriors and Jade, I love base destruction. I think that is a fantastic thing in this game that it's not just about like, you know, who can launch both missiles. The fact that you can have that second option of destroying the base with direct damage is fantastic. It adds tactical divergence and depth to the game. Flame tanks, 
have had that taken and it doesn't look like we're getting that back, I'm sorry to say. Flame tanks are now purely infantry removal with a little bit of, oh, yeah, if there's a rhino in the way now, it might actually finally kill the rhino after 20 seconds. That's not a buff to the flame tank for me because it doesn't give back what they were supposed to do. They Now flame tanks are in a position where if you wanted to do the base rush with them, it used to be a case of if you want to do the base rush, you need to hope that your opponent, one, doesn't see it coming, two, that you get the first missile and have enough spare Tiberium to pull it off, and three, that your opponent doesn't know how to counter it. Now, if your opponent has any one of those advantages on you, it's not possible, and it's still, that, that, that doesn't change anything. That buff there does not change any of that. So, flame tank, base rushing, not a thing. Phantom, too efficient to be the same cost as the hammerhead, so the cost is increased. Again, I'm sorry, I think that's the wrong way round. I think, quite frankly, the Phantom, ultimately, the Phantom's been in a decent place as an odd anti-air. Yes, the Hammerhead suffered, and with the slingshot around, the Hammerhead was going to suffer heavily. Okay, yeah, Hammerheads don't die to tanks, but Hammerheads do die to aircraft, which are the things that they're supposed to be killing. Rather than nerfing the Phantom and increasing its cost and thus taking away one of Nod's anti-air toys, I, I, I really feel that uh, the Hammerhead should have gone down to 90 to compensate. But there we go. We will see how that plays out. Quite frankly, I see stealth tanks just getting a lot more play now. It's been a kind of, do I run stealth tanks or do I run uh, phantoms? Phantoms usually involve you being uh, splashing into the uh, into the helipad, not the helipad, the air tower, splashing into the air tower for that extra unit. Now, it, it, um, whereas the, uh, what's it called, the phantom, you'd have to splash into the air tower, whereas the stealth tank would be in the war factory. If you've already got the war factory open, there's no point going for the Phantom anymore. It's so expensive, 160 for your first one, where stealth tanks are 90. Rockworm has issues reaching its target on time. Yes, because they're slow, so the speed has been increased from 3.959, which is a very specific number, up to 4.5. Cool. Are Rockworms going to be useful in high leagues? No. Are they going to be better in lower league and mid league? Yes. I would like to see some more Rockworms. I don't think that makes them great. I think it makes them good. Stealth Tanks, middle point between its last buff. Stealth Tank reload time increased from 11 to 10. So with that and the Phantom, we're just saying, sorry, Nod, you're not allowed to counter aircraft anymore. That's the slingshot's job. Okay, maybe that's a, a, a little bit over the top. <laughs> sorry, it feels a little bit like Nod's having its toys taken away from it. Like, you know, the Phantom isn't as good anymore. And now the Stealth Tank's not as good anymore. Yeah, it's, it's minor. It's minor. It's a, a minor reload time. Um, issue. So, yeah, quite frankly, stealth tanks are still going to be great. Especially since I'm just going to skip over the general here and go to this bit. Attack missile speed now, in, uh, now consistent regardless of distance. Yay! Awesome. So, actually, that's a little bit of a buff to nod anti here. Anyway, onto the general. The harvester bounty has been reduced from 100 to 80. Now, those of us who played in the pre alpha can tell you that this was one of the worst times in the pre alpha when they did that before. However, look at this second bit. The missile charge time has reduced from 45 and 45 for the first two missiles and 30 seconds for the third one to 40, 40, 40. Five second reduction on the first two missiles, um, 10 second increase on the third missile. That means that, uh, that's quite a change. That is quite a meta shift. That means that ultimately tech, um, you're gonna have to be better at stalling that first missile now because that first missile comes faster and you need to be hitting the ground hard. Rushes are pretty much pointless now. By the time you've sent two or three attack, by the time you sent three attack bikes, if you send three attack bikes across to a uh, to a harvester to kill it, you, you you've lost the amount. A, a scorpion tank rushing a harvester. If all the scorpion tank is, does is kill that harvester, it's made back ten Tiberium. That's a significant change to rushing and harvester killing. Combine that with the missile cha uh, charge time changes, and I don't know. I don't know. I think that kind of could solve some of the issues we have with tech in that it, it makes it harder to, well, it makes it easier to get the first two missiles done if you're playing aggro properly. If you're playing aggro properly, those first two missiles charge faster so you can actually stop tech coming out that little bit quicker. It's 10 seconds. 10 seconds is a big time in Tiberium uh, income. That should be enough to actually stop people getting tech out if you are pressuring those pads right. That said, that change to the last missile means that once tech is out, you're going to have a much harder time trying to steal it from them. And the bounties mean that it's less about killing the harvesters, more about pressuring them and keeping those pads charging. Ultimately, I'm actually quite positive 
about that change. We'll see how it goes. I'm purely theory crafting as we go, live on air, so to speak. But to me, that looks like Tech is getting a minor nerf in one way and a buff in the other. Tech is going to be better at what it does, but it's going to be slightly easier to stop it doing it. So I'm all for that. Also here, the uh, lock-on units, things like the Predator, Scorpion and Tick Tank. Basically, if you watch a Predator when it gets close to an enemy, it puts a little red laser beam between the two. Um, it used to be that even if something moved out of the uh, Tick Tank or Predator's range, it would still fire. Now it's only going to fire if it's been locked on for 0.75 seconds. It's a minor change, but I like it. Also, sad news, fixed the bug where the MG squad was not crushable by the Mammoth Tank. <sighs> I need to find the replay that Terra has of this and, and link that in the description below. Go watch it. Um, hilarious game where a guy actually manages to get a mammoth tank out but still loses because that mammoth tank can't do anything to the two MG squads that are charging. The pad can't crush them. And those two MG squads actually gun down the mammoth tank. Don't get me wrong, I understand that wasn't intentional. I understand the Mammoth was supposed to crush all infantry, including the MG squad. We know that it was a, an issue with the fact that MG squads don't use squad mechanics. They are infantry, but they also are sort of part vehicle in how they work, from what I understand it. Um, but yeah, MG squads now get crushed by Mammoth tanks. So that, with the other changes to the Mammoth tank, the increase to its speed and the slight increase to its damage, are we going to suddenly see the uh, the the Midnight Avatar deck having a GDI counterpart? Who knows? If you run a deck like that, do let me know how you find these changes. I'll be interested to know your thoughts. I know it sounds trite, but I do really love hearing your guys' feedback. Yes, okay, sometimes I get a little bit like, D -d did you even watch the video with it? But for, for the most part, I love talking to you guys in the comments below and on the Gaming Galleon Discord. So come, come talk to me. Let me know your thoughts on this patch. Once the patch is actually live and you've had a bit of time to get to grips with it, let me know how you're finding it. Um, otherwise, happy sailing and see you on the battlefield.